Hurley, thank you for yeah. coming. Uh, this morning's discussion is going to be on uh, infrastructure and housing prices in Nashville. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we got Will Hogue right here. And then Christian Lopez. And Brian Phillips, everybody. Yeah. Take us somewhere beautiful. Okay, I'm on the left. All right, well, my name is Christian Lopez and I'm from Martinsburg, West Virginia. It's very nice to be here. It's my first time on the boat. And uh, I've been playing the last two days. Yesterday I wrapped up at like one in the morning in Medusa. It's a good time, right? Yeah. I had a good time. A lot of adrenaline to fall asleep to. So that didn't happen. I once heard uh, in that Bob Marley documentary that uh, he loved to write his songs in the morning. He loved how his voice sounded. We're two very different people. <laughs> you look very similar. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna start it uh, with uh, with kind of, I think it's a good morning song, kind of tame. I've been rocking out every day as hard as I can. I'm gonna play some of my new songs for you. This one is uh, on a record I've been working on for the last few months, and uh, it's called Caramel. Storm 
say that I hadn't said in the other songs and so three days into recording I sat down and um, threw them all into the same song uh, <laughs> and, and got up the next morning and we, and we uh, recorded it so uh, these were my leftovers and it's kind of I guess it's a breakup album but I ended up obsessing a lot more uh, I'd said this before about about death in, instead of relationships because uh, uh, I don't know, it was like looking at my toolkit. My toolkit was not uh, really good for changes. Like, I kind of thought I was on one path and I could just sit in a comfortable place. And it's weird when everything changes, as it does repeatedly in life. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's, yeah, an art, I think, to, to moving with the change instead of like resisting it and getting victimized by it. So, anyway. I, uh, this song is dedicated to anyone who's going to die or knows anybody who's going to die. <laughs>
One of my favorite things about this, uh, this is only my second time on Kayamo, so thank you for letting me come out. Thank you. Um, this is really a, a cruise full of folks uh, from an artist's perspective and a fan's perspective that really care about songs, and that's uh, that means the world, I know, to the three of us up here and all the other artists on the boat as well, but um, this song is about uh, the process, I think, that all of us as writers uh, go through. This is not always about getting a song on the radio. Sometimes it's just about having to carve out something that you feel like uh, you need to say. Um, so this is a song about that process. It's called Another Song Nobody Will Hear. such a treat for me to be on this boat with so many amazing artists and musicians and people and especially like Glenn will hear you know it's a it's a learning experience for me as much as it is a pleasure and uh, I feel like I'm learning something every minute I'm on this boat speaking of boats I'm gonna sing a song that uh, I wrote about the first time I was on a boat well a ship I should say been on a couple small boats. Makes me think of that Forrest Gump line. Remember, he says that Bubba's like, You ever been on a shrimp boat? He says, No, but I've been on a really big boat. <laughs> I feel like that when I talk about that. I 
That went over better than I thought of it. <laughs> Forrest Gump quoted in a round. Is that Grandpa? Anyway, this song is uh, about a time that I went just this past August to Pearl Harbor. And uh, it was an interesting week for me because it was in the span of like 12 days, I flew to Las Vegas on my 21st birthday to party with my buddy who was in the Marines who met me out there and we had a good time. Spent a thousand dollars in just a few hours. <laughs> I hopped on a plane, I went straight to Pearl Harbor. And I got on a Navy ship. I got on the USS John C. Stennis, it was called. It's the biggest aircraft carrier in, um, in the world right now. It's the biggest ship in the world. And, um, 5,000 people, um, it was incredible. And it made me feel like such a piece of shit. Yeah. For just the contrast that I had in those certain just couple of days. <clears throat> With kids my age on that ship, living a completely different life. And, and we got to play music for the sailors. And when we weren't playing music on the stage, we were playing music off the stage, just anywhere we could find a little nook in the hangar, you know, anywhere they wanted to, basically. And they were talented, they could sing, they could play. We, we jammed for hours through the night and through the day. It was incredible. It was very emotional, actually, for me and the band. And uh, that's what this uh, next song is about. This is called Steel on the Water. Steel on water and boots on the ground Well, the waves can be rough, but the days can be rougher Goodbye to a girl, hello to a brother, a heartache at sea Where no one can tell that the battle he fights is the one with himself yeah, the battle he fights is the one with himself. Well, I'm just a singer loud in the hang, playing songs from the heart of dry land. Well, what do I know? I'm here for the show. I'm here for the lovers, train for a stand. It's home in the Tears in his eyes, may the ocean rock you to sleep tonight. Well, his vision is hazy, the water is clear. I'm gone in a moment, most of the year. I'm bringing home something, something for three. A mom at a table, a dad. A mom at a table, a dad on the screen. Well, I'm just the guy brought in with the band. Here for something I won't feel again. I'm playing for glory, I'm playing for sin. I'm here for the lovers, I'm looking ahead.
Laundry doesn't sell. We regretted all our wishes. If it's meant to be, it's easy. Nobody's gonna get hurt. The highway wasn't made for leaving. Whiskey wasn't made for regret. And smoke in my lungs makes it easier to breathe. Hearts will always mend. I will always feel this way. I will never leave your side. I won't lose myself to fear or lose you to my pride. I will speak less often. And I will speak the truth. Nobody's gonna get hurt. Back. And um, 
I was at dinner and, and my phone rang with his name and number on it, and my wife said, "Fucking answer it." <laughs> He said, I would love to play on your record. You should just come by the house, and uh, I've got a studio here. We'll, we'll, we'll record the guitar part for your song. And I thought, okay, that sounds amazing. And, um, when I get to Vince Gill's house, it's exactly what you expect Vince Gill's house to look like. It's like something out of Southern Living Magazine. There's these huge pillars in the front. And um, I go to the door, and I'm already really nervous, and I knock. And the door is like the size of this curtain, it seems like. And, uh, the door is open, and doves fly out. Shit. And it dawns on me at that moment that his wife is also Amy Grant. And that, and that, uh, she looks at me and smiles and says, hello. And I said, hi, I'm Will. And she said, she's Amy. And her name's Amy. And, um, and she said, I just want you to know I'm a huge fan. And I thought to myself, you're full of shit. <laughs> you're supposed to be a Christian. <laughs> she was fucking liar. <laughs> but then she very politely showed me to the studio and, and we, we recorded the guitar track on, on a song. It was amazing. And um, I kind of let that go. I just, I, 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 I made it through and a year or so later, when the record came out, I got invited to play at the Grand Ole Opry for the first time. And, and I was really nervous about that. And, uh, you know, you learn two songs to play at the Grand Ole Opry. It's very precise, the amount of time that you have, unlike this show where I can talk for 40 minutes before I play a song. <laughs> I'm gonna beat Todd Snyder's record. Uh, <laughs> We're talking. <laughs> but I get to the opera and I'm already nervous enough. And then right before we go on, um, they come back and tell me that, uh, I said, well, little Jimmy Dickens was going to introduce you, but um, Vince Gill has come here especially to introduce you because he wants to be the person that uh, introduces you for your first time on the opera. And I thought, that is, now I'm really nervous. And we go out, we play our two songs, and it's a blur. The band and I walk off stage, and, and Vince says, well, if I could come back on stage and play one more song for the people. 3,000 people there cheering, and I thought, I don't, what the fuck are we going to play? <laughs> and then uh, he asked if, if uh, he said, well, my wife, Amy, and I, because his wife's name's Amy. <laughs> said, uh, my wife, Amy, and I have a, it just dropped our oldest daughter off at college for the very first time today, and she's a little sad. And one of your songs is the song that she's used on all of the videos of our daughters growing up. It's a song of yours called Baby Girl. And would you be kind enough to, to play it for everybody? And I said, yeah. And he sat in and played and she sang. And the only thing I could think while we were doing my first encore at the Grand Ole Opry and Amy Grant was singing along with these words, I called that woman a liar because she said she was a fan. And she'd been using this damn song on her videos for her daughters for like 12 years. So I'd like to point out that Amy Grant is a fine Christian woman. That was not the same song I was to with her husband. And this would be awesome now if I welcomed them out here to do it again. But they are not here. But this is the song that they said they liked. And it was true. May the sunlight find your face Even when the rain does fall Get back on your feet again Every time you slip and fall
Yeah, it might be on its last day, but it's still on its way. Yeah, it might be on its last day, but it's still on its way. in the sweet of the deal with a few books and a reel to reel the auctioneer is doing well the final batch to sell he said it ain't no throne but it's got to go won't you take it home with you? Well, it's been dinner at a table, a light bulb changer to a place to sit when you were able to stand and hear the news. It's been a lover's morning coffee and a widow losing sleep. Yeah, it might be on its last leg, but it's still on its feet. Yeah, it might be on its last leg, but it's still on its feet. It's been in a red a light bulb change it to a place to sit when you were able to stand and hear the news. It's been a lover's morning coffee and a widow losing sleep. Yeah, it might be on its last leg, but it's still on its feet. Yeah, it might be on its last leg, but it's still on its feet. song, I actually should have practiced it. Uh, it's got a lot of chords. Uh, but I feel compelled. Uh, time for something silly, or at least. Uh, I wrote this song at, at a Vipassana meditation course. I went to, it's this uh, Goenka school Vipassana meditation. So for 10 days you sit on your butt for 11 hours a day. Uh, and uh, did this a while ago and uh, discovered uh, that I'm sexually obsessed, I think. Uh, I sat there, I expected to be going to some deep meditative state, and instead I was, I kept having vivid sexual fantasies of every woman I've ever met. And, uh, having to kind of reorient myself to my breath and the scanning of the body that you're supposed to be doing, and then I'd go off into another wild escapade and recenter and come back. And, talked to other men at the end of this uh, 10 days, and they all had pretty much the same experience. Um, and then, then talked to the women who were at the same meditation course, and they all got strongly psychic and were supporting each other through major epiphany moments. Uh, you know, they, they finished the saying, it was like, I could really feel your presence. Behind. I was going through such a hard point, and I totally felt your, your support. And I was like, yeah, it was... I knew you were feeling so much pain. I mean, could you, you know, she's looking at this woman's neck and it's like, I just knew you needed sisterly love. And it's like, thank you so much. <laughs> Meanwhile, the men are just like dogs. Just dogs. Uh, anyway, you, you weren't supposed to have any input, output during these 10 days. And so uh, uh, I had to sneak away on the, the day eight. Uh, I found myself a Sharpie and a uh, Southwest Airlines ticket envelope in my bag. And I hid out uh, in the toilet and 
wrote down. For some reason, I had like three verses and a bridge and all the uh, all the chords in my head, and uh, I needed to get them out of my head so I could go back to my explicit sexual fantasies. <laughs> And so this, this apparently is the song that I write when I've been meditating non-stop 11 hours a day for eight days with no input and no output. And it's, a, it's about a friend, a, a friend of mine in a story he told me about growing up in the Carolinas and he wouldn't write a song about it because he didn't want his dad to get pissed off. So it's the other thing I need to tell you is that this is not my father because my father, he was a physicist and electronic engineer, uh, amateur parapsychologist, and we did a lot of like psychic testing on my brother and I. Uh, but, uh, he, he did not, as a matter of fact, uh, kill small animals with shotgun uh, or try to. So, just so you know, so you have to picture a 15-year-old boy uh, with a, a, I don't know, a simplified relationship to the Almighty. Uh, and here we go. I was the driver for the drive-by of the neighbor's dog. Dad had always said to him, and he said, come on, son, get into the vega now, and I'll go get my shotgun. It was a military holiday. Kids were everywhere. I hid behind the steering wheel. Tried to disappear, tried to speak, but couldn't. Dad was whistling and drinking beer. And I prayed, dear God, if you save this dog, I will never get high, I will never jack off. I will do all the things that I should, but not be a good boy from now on. Turn around the corner soon Saw the neighbor's yard Dad lit up a cigarette And rolled his window down And grinning like an idiot Stuck his head and body out And I prayed, dear God If you save this dog I will never get high I will never jack off I will be all the things That I should but not Boy, from now on, be a good boy. From now on, well, he popped in a shell, so came with the gun, the flash, and a bang. The dog, it was gone. It jumped up and ran away. Dad had shot right through his chain. To take me to the dairy freeze I want to have a shake We sipped them on the benches there Stared out on the lake Dad has never said another word about that day And I hope you're not disappointed, God Cause I still get high I still jack off Such a good God. Such a good, good God. I say hallelujah. Well, I'll be a good boy from now on. song, but it was already taken. I love that we've reached the religious portion of our program. That's good. As a fine southern boy, then it's only fair that I play you a religious song now. Uh, and like all good religious songs, they should be based in a true life fact and experience, because that's important in religion. Um, we were supposed to laugh at that. This is about the day that I met Jesus, and I hope that you enjoy it. Jesus came to earth today, smack down in the Tennessee. Knocked on my front door and said, hey, Will, remember me? I said, oh, Lord, please forgive me, but I ain't real good with names. But your face looks real familiar. Wait a second, is it James? And he said, no. the Son of God, and I didn't realize. I said, man, I'm so sorry, and invited him inside. Offered him a 
sandwich because he was looking awful thin. And then I went and got nervous and said, so Jesus, where you been? And he said, heaven. Well, I've been in heaven. <laughs> then I saw him looking at a picture from my wedding day of my wife and me and our one-year-old son. I said, I guess that's not okay. He said, the truth is, all I care about is that you love and take care of your kids. I remember I was born out of wedlock to those some folks soon forget that. truth. I said, PBS, okay, my friend. We both had a laugh. We went to school and said, kept showing. We started looking pretty sad. It was all war and death and hatred. Poverty and greed. He said, the rich folks and politicians are sure starting to get to me. What part of love your neighbor? So hard to understand. I said, don't take it too hard, Jesus. Just take it drive, my man. Take it drive, my man. All these angry men with signs that said that God hates fags, and Jesus said, Let me out. I walked up to him all calm and cool, and I heard one man shout, Get out of here, you goddamn hippie. I can't wait for you to die. And Jesus said, I already did, and then smiled and waved goodbye. Got in and said, Daddy doesn't hate nobody. That's an awful thing to say. Plus, Daddy knows what he's doing. He's the one that made him gay. God made him gay. Shed a tear. He said, Y'all sure have made a mess of all the things that we gave you down here. All this war and global warming. No help to the sick and the poor. Maybe Daddy and I should just pull the plug. Y'all ain't worth it anymore. I said, Whoa, Jesus. I'll take it easy. I gotta pick my two sons up at three. And if it's uh, gonna be Armageddon, I think I'd like to have them here with me. And he said, Okay, then let's go get them. And turn up the radio. We sang along the old Merle Haggard songs as we rolled on down the road. Mama Child, oh, oh, Mama Child. Pulled up to the playground and Jesus said, looky there. There were children running around laughing. There were smiles everywhere. It was the white, the black, the Chinese, the short, the fat, the tall. Christians, Muslims, Jews, and atheists having themselves a ball. Jesus smiled and said, well, there's hope for you folks to get to learn a lesson from your children and try not to forget. And I call off this doomsday into the world and I can go back home. It gets wild when I leave Daddy and John Lennon up there all alone. Oh, yeah. I said, okay, Jesus, take it easy. I guess I'll see you another time. And just like that, he was gone and everything seemed fine. people in this world who have that, that one who got away. You got songwriters, romantics, like myself, I guess. Then you have serial killers. <laughs> you have that, you have that, uh, that one who got away. Then you have that one who got away. <laughs> Goes like this. Sometimes the wrong is all I see. 
Basically, it's the Bob Schneider game. Bob Schneider invented this idea where he sends out a title every week, and there's about 18 of us who all write a song and send it back in. So it's every Wednesday. You get a new title, and the next Wednesday you send in a song, and it's just a good way to like remember to write songs. Uh, sometimes I forget to do that. Uh, um, a lot of my new album, I was trying not to write breakup songs. I was like determined that I was gonna write a happy dance record. Uh, like, fuck breakup songs, so depressing. And then he started sending these titles that were like, Reconstructing the Diary, Leaving Old Town, My Criminal Career. So <laughs> I started writing all the songs I needed to write. Um, 
And I'm really happy I'm on the boat this week and can't send in a title because this week's title is History of the Minotaur. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first time I like wanted to just write him and slap him via email. And like, what What are you thinking? <laughs> what do you think we do here? Uh, but the week before was in the lantern light, and uh, so uh, I guess the other thing I'll mention. My friend Amber was talking about. There's a few songs about songwriting. There's a great song called um, uh, that Robbie Folks did uh, called Fountains of Wayne Hotline about calling up the Fountains of Wayne hotline to learn how to write a good pop song. And, uh, Amber was telling me about somebody else uh, who, who has a song that's talking about being a, you know, being a cookie cutter uh, male singer songwriter. First you go high, then you go higher. Say you're beautiful, repeat the next line, repeat the next line. And, <laughs> I'm going to achieve like two out of three on this, <laughs> just so you know. Uh, sometimes you gotta. <laughs> so. That's the pentatonic riff you gotta use in every ten songs you write.
just have me. I, I'm not talking to you guys at this moment. We have time for one more each after this song. Okay. I was told that from the wings. Now we're back. Uh, got a new record that's coming out in August. We've been home working on that a bunch. And this is uh, one of the songs that I have not played, and I'm going to attempt to play it for you. You go to bed early, and darling, I stay up late. Come to the morning, kids are already away. Getting dressed, getting breakfast, out the door, no bugs. Hope they don't see these walls building up between us You put on your makeup and don't even look my way Pass by me in the hallway like a ghost that's running away Tell me we've got dinner plans, friends at five Maybe we could just act happy now Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, anyway, <laughs> this is, uh, I'll just finish these off with a song off uh, my record that I have here on the book, my, my, my debut album. And this is a song off that. But, one more huge round for my friends Glenn Phillips. My first time on the boat. It's been incredible meeting all of you guys throughout the days. It's been, it's been just amazing, and uh, I've been having the time of my life. So thank you.
Thank you.